destroyed my life. I grew up with cats. They're amazing. They're easy. They're beautiful. They're independent. They can lower your blood pressure and there are tons of other proven health benefits. <laughs> and for all you dog people out there, I remember every detail of the night I realized you guys are so right. I had just started dating this guy, and he had this little 10-pound Pomeranian. Super cute, and not at all what I expected when he first told me in his manly southern drawl that he had a dog named Samson. But anyway, we were house-sitting for his rich uncle, and Nathan, the guy, has to work really late. So it's just me and Samson. I make myself a decadent vegan dinner in their chef's kitchen, have a soak in their saltwater hot tub, and retire to the den, as you do when living the life of luxury. And I'm melting into their man-eating couch with their 80-inch screen lulling me to sleep. And then I realize I haven't seen Samson in a bit. So half asleep, I let out this pathetic little call. <coughs> Samson. And immediately, I hear his pitter-patter coming from way above me, and it's getting louder and faster as he's plunging down flight after flight of stairs. He rushes into the den, leaps like a flying leap up onto the couch and right up against my chest, and he rolls onto his back and looks up, to, up at me with absolute devotion and gratitude for this belly rub he's now getting. <laughs> And after a lifetime of calling out to various cats who would then slyly stare me down as they rub up against the furthest doorway in the room, I finally get it. And I'm hooked. I want a hundred puppies. Yeah. So about a year later, Nathan and I, and Samson of course, have moved into our own little house. And we are happily, albeit clumsily, navigating the hurdles and pitfalls of first-time home. And this one night, we're supposed to go to this work thing, and all this shit is going wrong. Workers are late, they finally come and go, windows just start popping out of their frames, and despite our combined IQ of nearly 300, it takes us forever to get them back in. The house is clearly not okay with us going out tonight. So we don't. And as soon as we resign ourselves to this and settle into our own man-eating couch for the night, we hear barking out front. We open the door, and almost directly in front of our home is this little pink kennel. And we look up and down the street, not a soul in sight, and then we see some neighbors up on the balcony and we call up, hey, do you know whose this is? And they don't, like us, they heard the barking and they stepped out to have a look. So we bend down to look inside and there's this tiny little black thing and she's terrified and she's covered in her own poop and I'm frozen. But Nathan swoops up the kennel and is running inside with it. And she's so cute. She's so small and clumsy, and you can tell she already trusts us completely. And I'm instantly in love. But I know from past experiences that Nathan may not be ready to take on another fur child, so while I'm <laughs> gushing over her and crying about the fact that someone just abandoned her, and falling even more deeply in love with Nathan, who didn't hesitate for a moment to rescue her. I'm also trying my best to not get irreversibly attached in case we end up finding her another home. And the next day, I'm sending picture after picture after picture of the little black puggle from the poopy pink kennel. It's a lot of peas. And he writes me back, love, did we find a daughter? And for about two weeks, we were in puppy heaven. And then I guess she kind of figured out she was staying. Turns out George, yeah, we named her George. We live in Echo Park. <laughs> George was a naughty, <laughs> naughty girl. She was destructive and stubborn and had the energy of an entire team of untrained sled dogs. When I put Tabasco sauce on the kitchen cabinets that she started chewing up, I came home to find holes in the kitchen wall. 
and in 12 unsupervised seconds in the backyard, she destroyed months of dedication to potatoes and tomatoes that were nearly ready for harvest. She literally jumped out the car window on Santa Monica Boulevard one afternoon, nearly causing multiple collisions and my heart to stop. So, while her true colors are coming out and splattering our once orderly and peaceful life like a Pollock gone awry, <laughs> Nathan is desperately regretting that text message and begging me to get rid of her. And we're fighting about her constantly. There's not a moment of peace between us or at all for that matter. But there are some things in a relationship that can't be unsaid or untexted as the case may be and calling her our daughter was definitely one of them. Now, I have to say, I never actually wanted children, which was absolutely devastating to my mother, not for the reasons you're thinking. She was mad about this choice because it meant she would never have revenge upon me for all the hell I put her through. <laughs> when she came to visit for the first time after George whirled into our lives, she laughed maniacally and said, George is my revenge. <laughs> Hurricane George is demolishing everything in her wake, <laughs> including my marriage. But I'm learning so much from this tremendous, awe-inspiring storm. Patience, respect, compromise the importance of non-attachment to material things. Yeah. <laughs> and every time she learns to do something, like sit or go to prison, which was our kennel up command, <laughs> I am filled huh. with unprecedented pride. I'm understanding, and for the first time in my life, believing in unconditional love. And when she looks up at me, Almost always showing off a bone in her mouth, wagging her tail so violently that everything below her rib cage is swaying violently from side to side. I know that she loves me more than anything has ever loved me. And then she dies. And it's our fault. One of the many mistakes first time homeowners can make, this time with irreparable consequences. I'll never forget finding her body already stiff on the sidewalk that morning. I collapse onto the concrete, my heart ripped from my body. A woman walks by with her children. I wouldn't even have noticed her, but she kneels down and hugs me from behind. This stranger cries with me, holds me for several minutes as I hold George then kisses me on the head and goes off holding her children by the hand. I finally find the strength to stand, lift George up in my arms, carry her across that fucking street and bring her back home. I hold her rigid body against mine for the next six hours, feel the skin start to wrinkle, Go horse, apologizing for failing her. It is the worst day of my life. And I want more than anything to just go with her. Instead, I grieve deeply that week and then go to Kentucky, a trip that had been planned for months. And when I arrive, my husband's mother has just found a little dog trying to cross a busy street her fur so matted that she looked like a pile of trash being blown into the city by the winter winds that were already frosting windshields and windows. I'm not ready for another dog. My heart is still so broken. Shattered glass cutting through my rib cage, but she needs a home. And Samson misses his sister. He frantically searches the house for her, then looks to me lost and confused, then searches again, sorting through the bones and toys that are the rubble she left behind. So we bring her home the next week. And the week after that, our neighbors have just found a puppy they can't keep. A puggle, like George. So we take her too. It's been a year and a half since we lost George. 
and now we have five dogs. <laughs> five children who, like George, need someone to save them, and care for them, and love them unconditionally. I'm the kind of person who holds on tight and has a lot of trouble letting go. So I sent some of George's ashes to an artist I found who makes cremation pendants out of blown glass. And I sent him a veritable novel about who she was and what she meant to me, about how bad she was and who she made me. And about a month later, I fight my way past the cacophony of barks and howls, the doggy discord that frightens the mailman <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> and that fills my days and nights with excitement, frustration, and mostly joy, and open a package to reveal my pendant, my beautiful girl's ashes blown <coughs> into the shape of a hurricane. Wow. Wow. 